What's up guys, my name is Kelvin Wiley and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over 5 facts about Emblypajids. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So starting it off with fact number 1 is that Emblypajids are arachnids. Now when you hear the word arachnid, what usually comes to your mind? Is it spiders? Well if it is, you are correct, spiders are arachnids, but believe it or not, there are actually 11 different groups of arachnids on planet Earth. Spiders are the most well-known, the most famous, but besides spiders, there are 10 other groups of arachnids, 11 in total, that most people are completely unaware about. So speaking in terms of scientific classification, taxonomy, the class Arachnida, which is actually where you get the word arachnid from, Think of it as like an umbrella. So under this umbrella, uh, the class Arachnida, extends 11 different orders of arachnids. So just to name a few, you have scorpions, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. You have ticks, which I know we're all familiar with, especially when we go outside. Um, you have Europigids, which are commonly referred to as vinegaroons, you have solifugids, which are commonly referred to as camel spiders, and so on and so forth. So in total, there are 11 different orders of arachnids under the class Arachnida. But what exactly constitutes or classifies an arachnid to be considered an arachnid? Well, all 11 orders of arachnids share three main things. The first is that all of them have a total of eight legs. Now, later on in the video, you're gonna to come to find that some of the orders, especially this one, that's on my face, the Emblypagid, some of the orders have modified legs, which they use as sensory appendages. So I'll get into that later on in the video. Now, the second thing that all arachnids share are a pair of pedipalps. Now, pedipalps are sensory appendages that are found basically on the faces of all arachnids. Now, their particular function varies on the order of arachnid. So, for example, some orders, the pedipalps uh, serve as a function for mating rituals um, in courtship. Other orders, they function as uh, basically appendages used to catch prey with. So it just depends on the order in which the function serves for it. When it comes to male spiders, however, their pedipalps serve as their sexual organs, believe it or not. So both male and female spiders have pedipalps, but the females, their pedipalps just kind of serve as uh, feelers for navigation, um, and they can kind of also help in aiding with catching prey, but with male spiders, their literal sexual organs, the things that they use to mate with females with, are located on their faces, basically. So uh, that is something very unique and only exclusive to male spiders only. Now the third and final thing that all arachnids share are a total of two body segments. So unlike insects whose bodies are split off into three separate body segments, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen, and also uh, unlike myriapods, which are centipedes and millipedes, who have many, many body segments, uh, there, and also, let me just, because I talked about the legs, uh, insects have six legs, Centipedes and millipedes, they have many, many legs, varying on the species. Uh, arachnids have, like I stated already, eight legs, but they have a total of two body segments. So their bodies are split off into two separate parts. You have the prosoma, which is also called the cephalothorax, and then you also have the epistosoma, which is also called the abdomen. Now, when it comes to the arachnid order Akari, which classifies ticks and mites, their body segments are the nathosoma and the idiosoma. But I just want to throw that in there because not all body segments are referred to the same within the 11 orders. The 10 are, you know, cephalothorax and abdomen, but when it comes to ticks and mites, it's the nathosoma and idiosoma, but that's, that's you know, discussion for another time. <laughs> Moving on to fact number two is that Emblypagids are not spiders nor scorpions. So a few names that are associated to these arachnids 
is Cave Spider, Tailless Whip Scorpion. Although these are just common names, believe me, I, common name, a lot of common names don't have much merit to them. Um, that's why scientific classification is important. Scientific names um, are, you know, much have a much higher value than common names because, you know, so many creatures, so many organisms have over a hundred different common names given to them, uh, depending on, you know, where people are located. For example, like the, um, this is just random and kind of off topic a little bit, but uh, the mountain lion, uh, you know, has over, I believe, 40 different names. Um, you know, cougar, mountain lion, puma, you know, that's fine. But for this creature, and this is something that I try to stay away from, is referring to it as a cave spider or a tailless whip scorpion when discussing it to people. The reason why uh, I call it emblypogid is not only because that's really scientifically what it is. It's within the order Emblypagy, therefore it is an Emblypagid. Um, <laughs> so the reason why I refrain from using those common names and just call it Emblypagid is not only because, like I said, scientific, but because it'll then put the uh, impression in someone's mind that it's a spider, you know, a type of spider or a type of scorpion, and it is neither of those. <laughs> so. Like I said, it's within the order, the arachnid order, Emblypogy, and therefore it is in a group of its own. It's literally its own organism. So I, I don't think I really have to explain why it's not a scorpion. As you could see, there is no stinger. You know, it doesn't have the famous or infamous <laughs> appendage, the stinging appendage that scorpions sport. Um, and it is not a spider because all spiders, what makes a spider a spider, um, I mean, I can, I'm not gonna go into really what makes a spider a spider, That's, that'd be for a different video, but all spiders produce silk. That is really the number one thing that separates spiders from other arachnids. All spiders obviously have eight legs, they have pedipalps, the males, actually, I'm, I'm just, I said I'm not going to, but just briefly, um, <laughs> male spiders, like I said earlier on in the video, their pedipalps as, act as sexual organs. Um, these don't, their pedipalps do not, um, and spiders produce silk. Emblypogids do not produce any silk. Believe it or not, spiders are the only arachnid out of the 11 that produce silk, so that is exclusive only to them and them only. So. They are not spiders, they are not scorpions, they are emblypogids. They are within their own unique order. <laughs> so really quickly, I just wanted to share with you guys my brand new line of stickers that I have available for sale on my website. All of these are various animals that I drew on paper by hand, colored them in, and then converted them into high quality, long lasting, waterproof stickers. Just to give you a quick idea of what they look like up close, here's one of my favorite drawings that I drew of a European Hornet. All of these drawings were achieved by using these markers to color them in. If you're interested in purchasing any of these stickers, you can head on over to my website, calvinwiley.net, or you can hit the link in my description which will send you directly to my website for you to purchase them. Thank you so much to all of those in advance who end up getting one for supporting my small business. And now, back to the video. All right, so fact number three, emblypogids are non-venomous. So emblypogids possess no venom whatsoever. Uh, they have no venom systems. They do have fangs, however, but there is no venom glands attached to their fangs whatsoever. So they have no way of injecting venom. So just to give you a close-up of the fangs of the emblypogid, its fangs are right there. That is the the uh, upper side. I'll show you underneath. But its fangs are right there. They're kind of tucked away a bit. But as you can see where my finger is pointed, or the arrow, I'll probably have an arrow. Segwaying into fact number four is that emblypogids are predatory. Now, earlier on in the video, I discussed how, depending on the order of arachnid, some arachnids will use their pedipalps for 
uh, mating purposes and others will use their pedipalps to catch prey with and blypigids use their pedipalps to catch prey with now the pedipalps on blypigids are much different than those of spiders uh, and blypigids as well as scorpions and vinegaroons they will use their pedipalps to grab and ensnare prey with and then they will feed the prey into their mouths so this appendage right here as you can see he's trying to grab me but <laughs> these are the pedipalps they almost act as claws in a way uh, i know people you know refer to the pedipalps of scorpions as pincers or claws or whatever but the real word for it is pedipalp or pedipalps and as you can see the pedipalps are barbed and they almost act reptorial in a way um, if you're familiar with praying mantises they have reptorial forelegs their pedipalps the way that they extend and bend almost like a vice grip is very reminiscent to the front appendages the reptorial forelegs of mantises and also giant water bugs as well so once the emblypigid catches its prey its prey becomes impaled with those spikes and then it will immediately begin to uh, rip it apart with its fangs which it will then feed into its mouth located right in there and blypigids are completely harmless to humans as demonstrating right now i could put my finger where its fangs are and it is not going to bite me whatsoever see that now if you're an insect <laughs> that is a different story and now for the fifth and final fact about emblypigids. Emblypigids are mostly blind. So these arachnids have a total of eight eyes, but they are terrible seers. Uh, they can't actually visualize images out of those eight eyes. They can, however, distinguish between light and darkness. The room that I keep this emblypigid in, the room is dark when I'm not in there. But the second I turn that light on, this emblypigid scurries and hides the moment I turn that light on. But despite them not being able to see out of their AIs, there is hope for the emblypigid. So emblypigid, like all arachnids, have a total of eight legs, but the front legs of the emblypigid are modified. And as you can see, they extend out let me see if I can get a better view. So they extend outward just like that and act as almost like feelers. And so these modified legs, which still are legs, you know, it still has eight legs technically, aren't used for walking, but are instead used for navigation and sensory, uh, basically communication. So this emblypigid as it's navigating through the world will be tapping and it will feed information to the emblypigid of what you know what it's touching so if it's touching prey it will send the response that oh this is food and the emblypigid will go after that prey item they can also find a mate this way so let me see if i can get a better view of it so the antenna form are super super fine and thin and they are adorned with ct or sensory hairs you see that and that relays information back to the emblypigid of what it is feeling if you're familiar with vinegaroons vinegaroons also have antenna form as well see how it's just outstretching its antenna form trying to figure out where it's at and trying to relay information back of what may be ahead of it. So fascinating to watch. Well, that's going to conclude today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and learned some facts about emblypigids. 
So if you enjoyed the video, if you could please leave a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications. That way you're alerted every time that I post a new video. Follow me on Instagram at Kelvin Wiley and also on TikTok at Kelvin underscore Wiley. Check out my website, kelvinwiley.net, and I will see you guys in the next video.